Hello YouTube, if you're new here, my name is Chrissy and this is The Little Glam A Lot Of Mom and if you're not, welcome back. The holidays are here and so the stockings are being hung, the Christmas tree is being adorned, the cookies are being baked and today's video is a plan with me homeschool holiday edition. My first step in planning is always to take a glance at our calendar. This way I can be mindful of planning around days uh, that we have appointments or other activities. This year, I'm utilizing these Advent planning sheets by Hearth Magic to very loosely lay out my plans, ideas, and thoughts on paper for our Advent. There are six categories that I can plan into, like verse and songs, uh, stories, recipes, crafts, and uh, for every day of the week. And there are four sheets, one for each week of Advent. Our Advent devotional this year is the Advent Jesse Tree Devotions for Children and Adults to prepare for the coming of the Christ Child at Christmas. This has 25 devotions for each day from the 1st to the 25th. Each devotion traces the heritage of Jesus through stories and prophecies of the Old Testament. I know that this has been around for a while, but this is new to us this year. What drew me to it was that there are two versions uh, for each devotional, one for adults and one for kids. Each devotional includes scripture, a story, commentary, a prayer, and hymns. Each devotional story is also paired with a symbol to represent it. And so Amber at Hearth Magic created a printable set with her beautiful artwork. And so here are the symbols and we'll probably uh, put them on some sort of cardboard and hang them on a tree or make a wreath. Uh, Amber also included the scripture to go with uh, each symbol if you didn't actually have this book and just referenced to the Bible. So I'm going to take all of this information, again it makes it really easy to transfer over since Amber has already broken it down for us, and use my planning sheets. I also printed an advent set from Hearth Magic. Again, she has several that we've used in years past, and all of her advent printables include a key and instructions to assemble this. And so every day we'll just open up a little window as we count down to the birth of Christ. This year we'll also display it with our peg doll nativity set I made for the kids a few years ago. And can you see why I choose to use good quality wool felt? These peg doll sets have been played with every season the past two years and they haven't aged at all. If you've been following us the past year and a half, you know that we're deep into geography studies again and so we're going to take a pause on our unit study of South America and the Amazon, but continue the theme with a Christmas around the world. We're getting together with other local homeschoolers for a geography Christmas fair, where each child chooses a country and creates a display showing how 
uh, the people of that country celebrate Christmas. We're going to immerse ourselves in several books and resources, one of them being this one, A World of Cookies for Santa. Follow Santa's tasty trip around the world. I'm so excited for this. We're going across the globe to see all the treats that await Santa on Christmas Eve. The Philippines, Russia, Argentina, Mexico, we're all over the place. And there are recipes for some of the cookies referenced in the book. was Noche Buena, a Christmas story in English and Spanish. This has been a favorite in our home for a while because our families also celebrate this Latino tradition of a big family gathering on Christmas Eve. Legend of the Poinsettia. This Mexican legend tells how the Poinsettia came to be through a little girl's unselfish gift to the Christ child. Noah has selected Mexico as his country for the Geography Christmas Fair, so this will be a fun legend to share with others. Also printed this set by Hearth Magic. Winter festivities around the world. There are fact cards about winter festivals like Saint Lucia, Las Posadas, Hanukkah, Solsticio, and a few more. Along with the fact cards, I printed the coloring pages for the kids uh, to use while we read about these winter festivities. <music> This year we're learning all about the fairy tale The Nutcracker and it's going to be tied in with our geography studies. So first the book that we've chosen to go with this is The Nutcracker by the New York City Ballet. <laughs> There are many variations of this fairy tale out there, but I was looking for the ballet and that's what this book is based on. So we're going to dive into this beautiful multicultural unit on the Nutcracker by Little World Wanderers. So the creator of this unit has made connections between the ballet, music, the fairy tale, and multicultural activities from around the world. There is a schedule provided for you in a four-week timeline and for subjects in reading, listen, or music, uh, craft, cooking, science, and geography. There is a supply list and a book list, although the only book required for this unit is The Fairy Tale, The Nutcracker, and The Mouse King by E.T.A. Hoffman. However, because this is a fairy tale from the 1800s, it does have strong subjects and imagery, so we opted for The Nutcracker by the New York City Ballet as suggested in her list of substitute books. So I'll share the overview of week one here for reading. We read up to a certain part of the book, listen to a playlist, and the QR code for that playlist is provided here on the book list. For science this week, it's a study on the difference between evergreen and deciduous trees. Geography, we're reading about the origins of the Nutcracker Ballet in Russia locating Russia on the map and doing some copy work on the map of Russia provided, like noting important 
geographical places by referencing an atlas and we get to do that for all four countries referenced in this unit. Cooking this week is assembling a party platter and for the craft we're going to watercolor an evergreens tree scene. Some of the other fun activities in this unit include a walnut study, so we're cracking walnuts, learning about their anatomy, journaling our observations, using the walnut shells to make little mice, and then making candied walnuts. While we're learning about Germany, we're also learning the history of the wooden nutcracker dolls. There's a study on Duke Ellington, the composer who arranged a jazz interpretation of the Nutcracker in the United States, making snowstorms in a jar for science, making sugar plums, and instructions for a snowflake window star. I'm super excited for that one. most looking forward to the week that we visit Mexico and we learn about the history and care of the poinsettia with observation logs, crafting paper towel poinsettias, and baking gingerbread cookies. Amber at Hearth Magic also has a nutcracker study companion for her VIP memberships group. The original set is a puppet set and that's available on Etsy. There are 70 pages in the companion, so the original puppets, handwriting and tracing pages, coloring pages, and activity cards, math worksheets, and of course her one-of-a-kind beautiful artwork. This supplements perfectly our study on the nutcracker fairy tale. So the fall and winter seasons are the best seasons for crafting in my opinion. So we have several projects planned. I bought this candle making set on Amazon. It includes a stainless steel uh, double boiler or pitcher uh, for melting the wax, the cotton wicks, and a tool to hold the wick upright while the wax solidifies. So we'll purchase the beeswax bricks from our local farmer's market and I'm excited to make and gift some candles this year. I've pulled out this color palette from our acrylic yarn stash to make a Christmas tree tassel garland. The kids are recently obsessed with making yarn tassels, super easy to make even for the younger kids. And I found this wooden advent or Christmas countdown at the Target hotspot or the bullseye spot. I purchased it with math activities in mind, but also it has inspired me to collect cardboard and make our own Christmas village. I have a few crafting books for inspiration here. And so we've had the Christmas craft book by Thomas Berger for several years, and we're still making our way through it. I've mentioned in another video, I'm attempting to make straw ornaments and it's proving to be tough, but we're getting through it. Uh, we'll also be using the instructions in here for a candle dipping, just a great resource with thorough instructions. Holidays by Ainsley Arment at Wild and Free, 35 festive family activities to make the seasons bright. So most of the suggestions in here are for the holiday season, but there are a few fall inspired handcrafts and one or two for Valentine's and Mother's Day. There's a felted advent spiral in here that I've had on my to-do list for years, so hopefully we get around to that. There are a few recipes in here, and I love all the inspiration for natural Christmas tree ornaments. We're trying that this year as well.
So I'll admit that you can find just about every craft in here on Pinterest. However, it is nice in my opinion to have it all in one place and just in a physical format in your hand, especially with the beautiful and serene photography that is a wild and free staple. I also love the matte paper in this book. Moving on to read alouds and independent readers for the holiday season, Bella will be reading Magic Treehouse Merlin Missions number one, Christmas in Camelot. And the back of the book reads, when Jack and Annie receive an invitation to spend Christmas Eve in Camelot, a magical place that exists only in myth and fantasy, they know they are in for their biggest adventure yet. What they don't know is that the invitation will send them on a quest to save Camelot Next week, we're starting our new read aloud, Little House in the Big Woods. We never got to this last year, and we do have a family literature guide to go with this from Hearth Magic, but sadly, we'll have to either skip that literature guide this time around, or maybe pick it up in January after the holidays. And so with winter solstice on December 21st, we'll pick up uh, our Brambley Hedge Collection book and read through winter story over several days. And of course, our holiday and winter picture books are available on the shelf for the kids to pick up during the season. I'll have a video up soon where I share our favorite holiday and winter season books. If you don't follow us on Instagram already, go do so. I'll link it down below so that you can keep up with our holiday studies and projects in real time, like these super sweet walnut shell scene ornaments with needle felted toadstools. And that's a wrap for today's video. Well, happy holidays, friends. I hope that this holiday season is nothing but uh, happiness and health for you and yours.